good day. Yung lesson naman natin ngayon, kung yung previous lesson natin ay nag-sketch tayo ng graphs ng polynomial functions, sketch naman tayo ng graphs ng rational functions. Ano yung gusto natin matutunan today? Gusto lang natin maka-outline ng isang process sa pag-manually sketch ng graph ng rational function. We'll follow the same assumptions na ginawa natin nung nag-sketch tayo ng graph ng polynomial function. Namely, factored na yung polynomial, but this time yung polynomial numerator at polynomial denominator. Tapos, wala din tayong non-real zeros ng either numerator or ng denominator sa rational function natin. Let's try sa example. We want to sketch the graph of r sub 1 of x. Ito yung function natin. And sabi natin, gusto nga natin na factored na siya. So, ito na yung factored form. So, how to get from the first form to the second form? Baka kailangan gumamit ng remainder theorem, rational groups theorem. So, we'll skip that. Ang zeros nung function natin ay yung zeros ng numerator. So, observe, no? This is in lowest terms. Wala tayong common factor na pwede i-cancel out. So, lahat ng zeros ng numerator, yun yung zeros ng function natin. Negative 6, negative 2, positive 3. Ang horizontal asymptote natin, since yung degree ng numerator at yung degree ng denominator are equal, let's take the ratio of their leading coefficients. So, 1 over 1. So it's y equals 1. Next, we identify the vertical asymptotes. These are the values na magpapazero sa denominator. Pero kailangan natin siyang isulat as a linear equation. Sa line kasi, hindi naman siya value lang. So, x equals negative 4, x equals positive 1, at x equals positive 5. Idamay na rin natin yung y-intercept, negative 9 over 5. Para natin makuha yun, zero natin lahat ng x. So, it's just the ratio of the constant terms, the numerator and denominator. Negative 36 over 20 simplifies to negative 9 over 5. Okay. So, based on these factors, these zeros, so ito yung critical numbers na gagamitin natin, we will construct our table of signs. So, what I would do is I would include a separator no, between the factors of the numerator and the factors of the denominator. So, the factors of the numerator, ito, x plus 6, x plus 2, x minus 3, factors ng denominator, x plus 4, x minus 1, x minus 5. Plot our critical numbers sa baba. Remember, this represents a number line. So, it's a continuum of numbers. Tapos, naka-interrupt lang tayo sa critical values. And bawat column dito ay interval. At aalamin natin kung yung function natin ay positive ba or negative dun sa interval na yun. First, let's mark yung zeros ng factors. So, at negative 6, 0 tong factor nito. At negative 4, 0 tong factor nito. And so on and so forth. Ano yung implication ng zeros ng numerator at zeros ng denominator sa properties ng rational function natin? Pag 0 yung numerator sa critical number, 0 din yung rational function natin. Yung sa critical number na yun. Pero kung 0 yung denominator sa critical number na ito, for example, negative 4, our function will have a vertical asymptote dun sa critical number na yun. So, hindi natin ito imamark na 0. Nakamark siya na VA. So, 0, VA, 0, VA, 0, VA. Next, we populate our table of signs with the signs ng bawat factor in each interval. Again, x plus 6, negative before negative 6. 0 kay negative 6, positive everywhere else. And you apply the same idea sa lahat ng binomial factors natin sa table of signs. And then we construct our summary table. So in the interval negative infinity of punta negative 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negative factors. You multiply 6 negative values together, positive yun. This will be negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So, in this case, like alternate yung signs, no? As we go from one interval to another, where each interval is bounded by critical numbers. Let's put up our summary here. Siya lang yung gusto natin. This is our Cartesian plane. Let's start by plotting the zeros. So, uh, negative 6, negative 2, positive 3. Ito yung zeros natin in blue. And let's plot our asymptotes as well. This is our horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4, x equals 1, and x equals 5. Hey, let's see. Gamitin na natin yung table of signs. 
Itong mga sketches na to, this represent no, yung section ng graph as they behave pag malapit sila sa critical numbers. So at negative 6, negative 6 is a 0. On its left, positive yung graph. On its right, negative yung graph. So the graph crosses negative 6 from positive papuntang negative. Next critical number, negative 4. At negative 4, we have a vertical asymptote. So at nakita natin from a previous lesson how our function behaves near a vertical asymptote. Parang it's either going to very large negative values or very large positive values. So at this vertical asymptote, negative sa kaliwa, positive sa kanan, our function must be going to very large negative values of, from the left side ng vertical asymptote. And approaching from the right side, it must be going to very large positive values. So may arrow tayo sa very negative sa left, may arrow tayo sa positive side sa right ng vertical asymptote. Negative 2 is a 0, positive crossing to negative, ito yung direction ng graph. 1 is a vertical asymptote, negative to positive, negative, right side, positive. 3 is a 0, positive to negative. 5, x equals 5 is a vertical asymptote, negative sa left, positive sa right. And let's keep in mind, no? itong horizontal asymptote, this gives us the behavior of the function as x goes to negative infinity or as x goes to positive infinity. So this is our sketch. So at this zero, since wala na siyang ibang pupuntahan asymptote or zero, susundan na niya yung horizontal asymptote. Magpa-flatten na siya. Then it goes down. So we're really just connecting the dots and arrows. So here, the arrow, connect natin sa zero, connect natin sa isa pang arrow. In this interval, may arrow tayo dyan, kinonect natin si 0, kinonect natin dun yung isipang arrow. And in the final interval, yung 3 papuntang, ah, sorry, yung 5 papuntang positive infinity, galing tayo dito eh. Tapos kailangan nalang yung sundan, yung horizontal asymptote, as x approaches very large values na positive. So, magpa-flatten na siya dito. So, this is our graph. This is our manual sketch. Let's make a comparison of our sketch with the actual graph na ginawa natin sa GeoGebra. Pwede na. And we can forgive no, yung mga inaccuracies. Kasi it's just a sketch. Eh. Ang gusto lang naman nating matutunan dito ay magkaroon tayong intuition pa paano mag-behave ang rational function based sa values ng zeros niya at values ng zeros ng denominator niya. Let's do a second example. So, ito naman, gagraph natin. Notice that the degree of the numerator mas malaki na isa sa degrees ng denominator. So, we know that this will have an oblique asymptote. But again, kailangan factored siya eh. However, this might be useful no, for doing long division para makuha yung oblique asymptote. So, maganda na nakikita natin yung dalawang forms. From the factored form, makita natin na una, it's in lowest terms. Wala tayong common factors sa taas at sa baba. And, Yung factors ng numerator, this will give us the zeros of the entire function. Kung kailan mag-zero yung bawat factor, ganun din mag-zero yung function natin. So we have zeros at negative 5, negative 1, 2, and 6. At denominator, we have two factors, x plus 3 quantity squared, saka x minus 4. Treat na lang natin siya sa isang factor. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. Wala na tayong sasabihin may multiplicity to yung vertical asymptote. Hindi natin sinasabi. nag apply lang siya sa zeros. But informally, kung gusto nyo magkaintindihan tayo or yung kayo ng mga kaklasin nyo, okay lang. Huwag nyo lang dadalhin sa college. Yung oblique asymptote, ah, kinumpute na rin natin. Nakikuha natin y equals x minus 4. Kung hindi natin alam paano siya i-compute, review tayo ng lesson from last week. Kukunin lang natin yung quotient at i-re-reject yung remainder. The y-intercept is the ratio of the constant terms no numerator and denominator. So it's negative 5 terms. May negative dyan dapat. Limitan ko lang. Let's construct our table of signs. So ito na siya. Nilagyan ko na ng zeros. Yung pertinent critical numbers. Tapos dun sa summary, na-identify ko na rin kung kailan mag-zero yung function at kung kailan siya magiging vertical asymptote. Kung anong critical number to zero or magkakaroon ng vertical asymptote. Then we plot the signs. So ano lang yung noteworthy dito? So x plus 3, since naka-square siya, 
positive siya everywhere except at negative 3, kung saan zero siya. So, looking at the summary, we have a zero na negative to positive. Ito lang yung gusto natin makita, ang itsura. Vertical asymptote na pareho yung sign sa kaliwa at sa kanan. Kasi nakita na natin for a zero eh, magbabounce pag pareho yung left and right na sign. Kung vertical asymptote, how would it look? So, ilalagay natin dito yung summary table, ng table of signs. This is our Cartesian plane. Let's plot the zeros. So, negative 5, negative 1, positive 2, and positive 6. And let's plot the vertical asymptotes. That would be x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. Pinilat ko na rin yung oblique asymptote na y equals x minus 4. Ano yung next? Yung behavior ng function at the critical values. So, at the first zero, it's negative going to positive. So, going to yung shape. At the first vertical asymptote, positive sa left, positive sa right. So, ganito yung itsura ng sections ng graph natin na malapit sa vertical asymptote. Kaliwa't kanan, parehong positive. Hindi na siya babagsak dito. At negative 1, which is a 0, it crosses from positive to negative, positive to negative. At 2, it's also another 0, it crosses from negative to positive. And then, at our second vertical asymptote, positive sa kaliwa, negative sa kanan. So, positive sa kaliwa, negative sa kanan. And finally, yung huli natin critical number, the 6, it's a 0, negative sa left, positive sa right. So, negative, 0, positive. So, these are the sections of our graphs. We'll connect the dots. So, yung arrow, kinunek ko dun sa 0. But, I know, no, or we know that the oblique asymptote gives us the direction of the graph pag malaking malaking yung x in both negative and positive. So, tatry ko na lapitan yung oblique asymptote here. Hindi ko lang nakuhang malapit kasi naka-crop yung graph. But if we zoom out, can imagine we zoom out. That should be the expected behavior of this section. Now here, positive now here, galing sa positive, dun sa may oblique asymptote, magkocross siya, dun sa zero, may negative. Pero kailangan niyang bumalik kasi may isa pang zero dun, eh, na negative to positive. So hindi na siya babagsak dito, babalik na siya agad. And it will, and the graph will connect dun sa arrow dito, yung nasa left side oblique asymptote. So ganito yung shape ng part ng graph sa gitna. So ito yung noteworthy, no? yung sinasabi nating ob, uh, Yung sinasabi natin, vertical asymptote na parang may multiplicity to. Hindi siya multiplicity, pero umulit siya. So, on the same side, yung graph natin sa kanya. Tuloy lang natin. Second vertical asymptote, negative sa right. So, ito yun. Coconnect dun sa zero, which is nasa negative at puntang positive. And as we approach infinity, so follow na niya yung oblique asymptote natin. So, nilapit ko na dito. So, to compare yung graph na in-sketch natin no, with the graph na ginawa sa GeoGebra, that's pretty neat. It's pretty close. Siguro yung na-miss out lang natin ay medyo mas steep dito kaysa flat dito. But with the information that we had, we, ha we have no way of knowing that. So, this is fine. This okay na tong ganito kahit hindi natin nakuha yung shape na sobrang lapit. One thing I forgot to include is yung y-intercept, which is negative 5 thirds so siguro dapat nilabel natin ito negative 5 thirds and negative 5 thirds here as well so it's time siguro for you to try it out on your own so I'll see you sa next lesson and probably see you sa next week bye and thank you